Welcome to Ben Samlack TV. Thanks for tuning in. Today I got Dr. Peter Dong here. And uh, Dr. Peter Dong not only went to Harvard for college, he also got a 1600 on his SATs. So I asked him to share um, a couple points on to something that may be helpful that people want to know to help them with their ACTs and possibly even get a 1600 like Peter. So Dr. Dong, please. Uh, sure. Out. Thanks, Ben. Um, so a lot of times parents uh, ask me about what they can do to help with their kids and the fact is if you ask me about it with ACT or SAT work, if your children are 17, the answer is honestly there's not all that much you can do at this mm -hmm. point. The whole point of these tests is to test basic skills that have been developing over a long time. But I also have questions from parents who have children who are six years old who ask me how they can do better on the SAT. On the one hand, it sounds a little ridiculous, but on the other hand, really the question is how can I raise my children in a way that they will be academically successful? And for that, I can give a few basic ideas that will help your children in general. The most important thing for academic success for children to do of any age up through 18 and beyond is to read. Uh, the absolute most important thing is that people read a lot uh, because of the uh, rise of, well, things like YouTube, uh, and a, a lot of a uh, variety of other things with social media and with smartphones, a lot of times people don't read as much as they should. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the quality of things written on a lot of social media sites are written by other people who write very quickly. That's not really the best stuff to read. But reading anything that interests someone is worthwhile. It doesn't have to be any particular th thing. It doesn't have to be from a textbook, but anything that is interesting and that is reasonably well written, so not just text messages. Um, is very important for someone to uh, for someone to develop the skill in reading. Requires lots and lots of reading. So the best one of the best things my parents ever did to me was that they read a lot, and from their example, we read a lot, and so my whole family grew up reading a lot. And when the SAT came along and we were re doing the critical reading section, there was nothing to prepare for. We already knew how to do it. Reading, just reading without the additional instruction, they'll get all that in school. Just reading will do the, the more for their development than anything else they can do. If we're going to talk about the math section, which of course a lot of people are, confirmed, are concerned about, you know, the basic school system will supply a lot of the math education that they need. Technically, it teaches them everything they would need for the SAT or ACT. Uh, but then still some people don't do well. So maybe the best thing to help with math is to do math puzzles. I say puzzles and not math problems. Math problems are like you have this algebraic equation, you solve the equation. They're going to get tons of that in school. What they often don't get enough of in school is math problems that test their uh, logical thinking, test outside the box thinking, uh, questions about how to connect these dots with only four lines, or how can you, uh, uh, logic problems that are involve you know, people standing in a row, but certain rules restrict who can stand next to who. There's usually books and books of these logic, logic type puzzles that are often not emphasized in a lot of schools. That sort of thinking, logical thinking, is really important for the SAT math section because really what they do is not stuff with difficult algebraic equations, but stuff to try and uh, test how well you really understand the progression of logical thought. And finally, I would say something you can do uh, as a family to help, help everyone together is, um, is talk more and watch less. Um, it is customary, people get home late from work, they're very tired, it is customary to, to uh, when coming home to just turn on the TV and not say much. Well, I certainly appreciate the the, the desire, even the need to do that from time to time. It's important to spend time talking with our kids and for the kids to spend time talking rather than watching TV. Limiting TV intake was also one of the best things that my parents did for me um, because it required me to be more creative with my time and the things that I did with my time instead of watching TV were, looking back, far more helpful for my development than anything, even if you watch an educational show on TV. That's because it's not the TV itself, but the fact that you're sitting there not doing anything when you're watching it. But if you're talking, you're actively engaging, you're constructing, and you're practicing. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I would say a, a very helpful thing is to talk more and read less. Now, these are not like magic bullets that solve everything, but they're good habits that if we can build up in our children, mm -hmm. that will really prepare them for academic success in the future. Dr. Don, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Very simple, but I think very helpful. Um, so if you liked uh, what Dr. Dong shared, if you would like to hear some more, see some more videos on uh, somebody who could possibly uh, give some good information, let me know. Put in the comments questions you might have for Dr. Dong. Um, but thank you for tuning in. Thanks, Dr. Dong. Thank you. Um, don't forget to subscribe, share, uh, like the videos. And thanks for watching. Ben Sam Like TV. Have a great day.